Hello and welcome to the third round of the 2016 PCC Cup Series season here at the New York Auto Ring. This year, the Super Speedway package is back. Cars will be traveling once again at 250 miles per hour, and that's caused quite a bit of controversy in the garage, as many teams thought this was going to be the end of it in 2014. However, the Super Speedway package has returned, and cars are going as fast as ever. The pole speed, set by Tom Wilson, was an average of 252 miles per hour, so we should expect to see cars hitting about 260 miles per hour in the draft. Another news story that just broke is that Chris Benson, driver of the number 55 car for Stefan's Racing, is not bringing enough money to that team. The team expects to see him through, possibly bringing money until about Talladega or so. Who knows if he'll be able to do so, but the money from his father, who owns the Stratosphere Casino in Las Vegas, is running dry. It would appear that some of the names on the shortlist include Greg Maddox, who's currently running in the PCC Light Series, as well as Casey Lester has been rumored to that ride, as well as Lucien Ekdal Jr., who drives the 37, he would bring Red Bull money to that team, if that would be uh, the driver that they choose to replace him. Now let's take you to the grid. Now, looking at the starting grid, not only did Tom Wilson qualify in the pole, but his team qualified in the top three. They swept the top three. Kyuga Hakai qualifies fourth, with Barney Ward and Alina Lazareva rounding out row three. Looking further back, Akio Gifu has a very good qualifying run there in seventh place. Uh, Nicholas Corradovos and Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer are in row five. James Hewitt, good run for him. And Louis Ballard in twelfth place. Going further back, Double B Motorsports locks out row number seven. Uh, there's Brian Gallagher, Joe Craig has his best qualifying run of the year, I believe. Duncan Cobb has a good qualifying run, and Ben Atkins in 18th place. As we go further back, uh, only 34 cars ended up qualifying. I believe it was 34 or so. Uh, there's Chris Benson, who had uh, is having some sponsorship woes. Uh, going further back, see here, uh, Dan Ferre, he was fastest in second practice, but he didn't qualify very well. Uh, Josh Marshall's been struggling quite a bit to get a grip of the track. There's uh, there's Ryan Matthews going further back. Some of these cars did not set very good practice times either. Uh, it was 36 cars that ended up qualifying. Uh, 37. Actually, Ramsey Cockner was the slowest in qualifying. The rest of the cars actually protested qualifying at the track uh, due to uh, the intense speeds. And Tom Delgado, the hometown hero, rounds out the field. At the green flag, Tom Wilson leads the field, and he gets a big jump over Cale Bernfart Jr., who slots there on the outside. Alex Phillips runs third. Johnson Racing currently 1-2-3, and uh, Cale Bernfart Jr. is going to pull low as Tom Wilson gets a big run going through turn two onto the backstretch, and he is going to hold on to the lead, but on lap number two, Wilson gives way after leading a lap to Cale Bernfart Jr., his teammate, the super speedway expert of the three, as Johnson Racing, oh wow, they're way up front. Uh, looking very good for them. Jerry Myatt in the 969 car, struggling, uh, as well as all of the nice cock racing cars. All of them occupy the last three spots, Jerry Myatt being the slowest of them. Ike Durbin uh, did not set a qualifying lap, but he's already making moves through the field, working with Tom Delgado. He's already uh, starting to get by some of the slower cars. As we uh, take a look there, Alex Phillips is in the lead. Uh, Alex Phillips, oh, looks like Tom Wilson's going to make a move for the lead again. Johnson Racing being extremely competitive here uh, early in the going. Duncan Cobb having an excellent showing. Uh, in 2014, he was a title threat, but unfortunately this year hasn't been the same. This is easily his best round of the season, as currently he is in second place on lap number five. Uh, looks like the 23 car has lost the draft now. That's uh, John Jefferson, who's in 39th place. Barry Juveno having the best run of his year so far. He's running in third place on lap number nine. Uh, drafting with Barbara Burt, as it looks like the uh, Johnson Racing cars have been swallowed up, and uh, they're going to start dropping back through the field, going on board with Ike Durbin, who uh, it's lap number 10, and he's with both of his teammates, and he's up to 28th place now, make that 27th, as he's got the inside line going, he's caught up to the field, and uh, he's working with Louis Ballard there, and uh, he passed Tom Delgado earlier, Louis Ballard looks like he might move out of the way there uh, to let him by. Taking a look here, here's Nicholas Corradovos, who's currently in 27th place. Uh, one of your championship leaders early on. I believe he is the championship leader at this point. Uh, Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer has pulled out a pretty good gap over Gaspar D'Souza there. 
in second place. Uh, Hank Jr. Reet Farmer won the pole in the last race at Phoenix, and he is doing uh, himself a lot of good by running up near the front today. Oh, looks like Andy Lambert got hooked, and he's going to go into the wall. A bunch of cars involved. Caution one, lap number 14. Oh, we had a drift there. Oh, we've got a couple cars over. Uh, looks like Barry Juvenos involved. Uh, oh, going on bar with Barbara Burt. Kuga Hakai's in it. Barbara Burt did a great job of missing that accident. As we go on board with Kuga Hakai here, uh, see what he saw. He had a great run earlier. He qualified fourth, but unfortunately, he's going to get involved. Uh, looks like uh, Alina Lazareva might have been a part of it. Uh, going on board with Frank Azzaretto. Uh, pole sitter Tom Wilson misses it. Oh, that was Candace Bowman who went over there and got into uh, Azzaretto, who gets hit by... There was another car there that was involved. I couldn't tell who that was. Uh, this is... Whoa! Josh Marshall just drifted that car at 220 miles per hour. Let's get another view of that. What on earth? How on earth did he save that? How on earth? Uh, that is absolutely baffling. I have no idea how he saved that car. That is easily save of the year. He... I've never seen anything like that in my entire life. Josh Marshall is the hero of this race easily. Uh, Gaspar D'Souza wins the battle off of Pit Road under caution, and he will lead the field to the green flag here over, looks like, uh, Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer, Alina Lazareva. Oh, that's not Alina Lazareva, sorry. That is uh, Ian Elias. Uh, those cars look very similar from a distance. Uh, Kurt Pliskin running in the top five as well. Ike Durbin takes the lead. Uh, after the restart on lap number 20, he goes from basically last to 20th put or to the lead in 20 laps that is fantastic driving from the 20 car from the two car sorry it's been a long day zero two car ryan matthews got through the wreck he's hanging on to the back of the pack he's doing a pretty good job he is uh currently running 22nd on lap number 22 and uh it's shaping up to be a decent result for that team here is Tom Delgado, the hometown hero. He's running in third place right now behind Cale Bernfart Jr., although it looks like he's getting passed on the inside by Louis Ballard, his teammate, and it uh, looks like Ryan Jeffries is there as well. Uh, a few other cars. As uh, we're taking a look here, Double B Motorsports, all three of their cars are currently running in the top ten. They're having a fantastic day so far, and uh, this team definitely needs it. Akio Gifu doing a fantastic job there on the high side. Uh, currently running up in the top five, but yes, all three of those cars are running in the top ten, but unfortunately it would all come to an end here as they get together, lap 27, caution number two, oh, looks like the 466 is over, uh, don't think there's going to be any more cars involved, oh, what are they doing? They just came flying in, no brakes whatsoever from the 23, and I believe that was the 69 car going on board with uh, Preston Bell here. What, what was that? Why did why did the 366 hooker team meet? I do not understand what they were doing there. That was just idiotic drive. Oh my goodness. That was a huge wreck between the 23 and the 466 going on board with Ryan Matthews, who somehow, I believe, missed another one. Uh, wow. How did he miss that? Ryan Matthews, the bull, misses another one. Going on board with Sapphire Anderson here, the 0-5 car. Uh, she gets doored, goes up. Uh, really just, I would not want to be in the Double B Motorsports uh, team meeting after this race. And uh, what on earth was the 23 doing? Uh, did that car not have any brakes? Uh, speaking of breaking down, here is the 2 car. Uh, under caution on lap number 31. And the two car is going to go out of the race from the lead. A suspension failure is going to take the two car out of the lead. And uh, that was the last car that had completed every lap of the season so far. So no cars have completed every lap of the season after race three. Greg Woodard leads on the restart over uh, Gaspar D'Souza. But D'Souza is going to take the lead easily on the bottom of the track. Greg, Greg Woodard drops back to second place. Now the hero of the race and easily the season. Josh Marshall currently hanging on to the back of the pack. He does not have a very good car. Uh, it does. It has not kept up with the draft very well. Oh, but we've got an accident there. He was running in 13th place. Uh, let's see what happened here. Uh, looks like Greg Woodard gets hooked by Duncan Cobb there. 
And uh, that's going to bring out the caution on lap number 33. That car is done, and he gets hit there by Daniel Sharp, and that's going to be the end of the day for both of them. Daniel Sharp had missed uh, the previous two accidents, but unfortunately he would not miss this one. We're going to go on board with him. Uh, I guess the spotter told him to go low, but uh, was not anticipating uh, Woodard's car to stop like that. Now, Gaspar D'Souza leads on the restart, lap number 37, over his teammate Lenny Jacobs there. Scott Wellen having a fantastic run once again in the 16 car. He's doing quite a good job. And uh, the 969 car is currently running in 12th place. So he is having a fantastic job so far. He's managed to avoid all the wrecks, and uh, he's just keeping his nose clean right now, uh, staying in front of uh, the wrecked cars. I'm not sure how he's managed to do that. Uh, here is Nicholas Corodovos, who has worked his way back up to the top five after a mediocre first half of the race. He's currently battling with James Hewitt for second place, uh, and also battling with James Hewitt in second place for the points as well. Tom Delgado, who got a little piece of that last wreck, is currently running in tenth place. He seems to be able to hang on to the draft a little bit. Uh, looked like Josh Marshall was also hanging on to the draft there as well. Dan Ferrey is going to take the lead on lap number 43. Uh, Dan Frey driving for Accelerator Motorsports. That team has not been uh, firing on all cylinders this season, uh, but this race looks to change that. Uh, they're doing a pretty good job here so far. Duncan Cobb, who was involved in that previous accident, currently running in 13th place, drafting with Chris Benson. Uh, looks like uh, Dan Ferrey is going to try to make another move for the lead, as he got... Uh, both him and D'Souza got a great run away from the rest of the field, and he's going to swing to the bottom and make it stick, going through turn number four, and Dan Ferrey's going to take the lead once again. Here's Kurt Pliskin, uh, Dan Ferrey's teammate, who's also having a fantastic run. He's currently running in seventh place, uh, make that sixth place now, uh, and Kurt Pliskin having probably the best run of his season so far. As it looks like, uh, here we've got Lenny Jacobs going on the bottom, and he's going to take the lead pretty easily. Lenny Jacobs has quite a few wins in the series. Uh, most of them have come on super speedways. Uh, the 18 car, who managed to drift his way past that one accident, has moved up into 10th place, passing Tom Delgado, who has unfortunately lost the draft. Home, hometown crowd's not going to like that too much. Uh, Ryan Matthews is also losing the draft very slowly. Uh, lap number 54 of 81. Uh, Dan Ferrey finally hitting lap traffic. It looks like that that is the 969 car of Jerry Myatt, who uh, is somehow slower than the damaged cars, uh, but he gets out of the way and gives uh, at least some of the leaders a decent uh, amount of room as they continue to battle on. Uh, Jerry Myatt, uh, remember what I said about him being a nice lap car? Yeah, so much about that. He's uh, blocking the low line, and you see there he's blocking Lenny Jacobs, who is having to use the high line, and I don't think that's going to work. Uh, here comes the 75 car, who is going a lap down on lap number 59, and that is how you be a good backmarker. Uh, take notes, Jerry Myatt. You're going to need him. Uh, looks like Preston Bell is uh, having not quite a great day. Alina Lazareva, who was involved in an earlier accident, is currently running in ninth place. Uh, she's managed to keep her car decently in the draft, and she was working with Ryan Matthews there. Here's the 81 car who got involved in a few wrecks, and he is swerving all over the place. Uh, that car's handling must not be very good, and uh, that's going to cost Dan Ferrey the lead as Nicholas Corradovos takes over the top spot. Here we've got Dan Ferrey going once again uh, by Gaspar D'Souza, who managed to work his way back to the lead. Dan Ferrey having the race of his life. I think he might have a shot at winning this one if he can keep his nose clean. Uh, Scott Wallen also having a fantastic run. James Hewitt up there as well. As we go on board with uh, Dan Ferrey here, we're looking out. We can see, I think that's Louis Ballard and Sapphire Anderson. Yes, it is. Pulls to the high side going around, and what is Ballard doing? He just stuffed the 96 into the wall, and that's two Accelerator Motorsports cars taken out from the lead in this race. That is an idiotic move. I have no idea what Ballard was doing. Maybe he, the spotter told him he was clear. I don't know what he was doing, but that was just, he just moved up on him. What was he thinking? Ah! As uh, James Hewitt brings the field 
to the caution and uh, under caution looks like uh, we've got a few cars staying out looks like the 24 car is gonna stay out Kurt Pliskin and he's gonna stay out and try to lead a lap uh, maybe oh no he's gonna pit the next time by so uh, Kurt Pliskin stays out leads a lap gets the bonus point and hands the lead over to Alina Zareva who as I mentioned before was involved in an accident earlier in the race we've got James Hewitt Ryan Matthews in third place, Gaspar D'Souza, and uh, looks like Lenny Jacobs, the top five, on this restart with just uh, with just eight laps to go. As Lino Zerva keeps holding the bottom, she's going to try to hold off James Hewitt as much as possible, but Hewitt's going to make a move on the backstretch, uh, aided by some much faster cars. Looks like Gaspar D'Souza and Nicholas Cordovo's there. Ryan Matthews having a surprising run up in the top five, and uh, Hewitt is going to take over the lead with eight laps to go. Uh, looks like Corridovo's making a move with help from Ryan Matthews, who's up to second place. Matthews having a fantastic run. Oh, looks like he may be going to the bottom. Nope, looks like James Hewitt's going to take that position away from him instead. With just seven laps to go. Oh, Alina Lazareva brings her car into the pits. I believe she has a tire going down on that 59 car. Looks like they didn't quite fix one of the fenders as well as they had hoped, and that cut down her left front tire. Tom Delgado back in the pack back running up in the top five he's currently running in third place now looks like he's going to be a threat at the end of this one nicholas corodovos however pulls it quite a bit away from everyone else corodovos way out front with just five laps to go over lenny jacobs and scott wallen let's see what they can do jacobs making a move on the inside just three laps to go on the inside lenny jacobs making a move he's gonna pull it off Coming through turn number two, we've got a lapped car up there. That's Alina Lazareva, but I think that she's going to stay out of the way. She's decently competitive enough, and I think she's just going to be some drafting help here. Looks like, uh, oh, Lenny Jacobs goes to the high side. Jacobs to the high side. Let's see if that's going to pay off. Uh, can he complete the pass? He does. He completes the pass, and Alina Lazareva is going to hold up her teammate. That is very interesting as now we've got Lenny Jacobs in the lead. Gaspar D'Souza has worked his way up to second place. Two to go. Lenny Jacobs, can he hold on? Be one lap to go on the backstretch. Looks like Gaspar D'Souza is going to be the only one who has a shot at it. He's going to pull down to the inside. Can he make a move coming to the line? Or is he going to stay in line with his teammate? I think he's going to stay in line with his teammate as coming to the checkered flag, Lenny Jacobs is going to win here at the New York Auto Ring. 1-2 for Paloma Autosport as we've got Scott Wellen in third place. There's a, a fantastic run, fantastic showing for uh, Ryan Matthews. That team desperately needs that. Uh, really, I don't think there's any other team that's more deserving of that. Uh, fantastic run for Kurt Pliskin as well. I believe that's the best run of the season. A good run for Nicholas Corradovos, who faded late after his teammate blocked him. Uh, Duncan Cobb has a fantastic run in seventh place. James Hewitt continues his great showing this season. With an 8th place, he's been very consistent so far. Tom Delgado, top 10 in front of the hometown crowd. And Dan Frey, despite getting spun out of the lead by Louis Ballard, finishes in 10th place. Josh Marshall, uh, the drift master. <laughs> uh, really, there's nothing I can say more about that. He finishes in 11th place. A good, strong run for that team. They desperately needed that to keep themselves up in the team points uh, near the front. Chris Benson, Money Woes, uh, are circulating around that team, uh, but he brings it home in 12th place, making sure that the sponsors know that he is still a competitive driver. Sapphire Anderson in 13th, Alina Lazareva, 14th place, one lap down. Louis Ballard, 15th after that stupid maneuver uh, with Dan Foray. Uh, keep your eyes open for any penalties that might uh, occur from that. Preston Bell, Lewis Jones, Jerry Myatt brings home uh, top 20 for that team. Desperately needs that as performance has fallen off from that team already. Uh, Greg Woodard in 19th and Daniel Sharp, uh, 19th and 20th, did not finish the race. Both were involved in a caution uh, about halfway through the race. Now looking at the point standings, Nicholas Cordovas takes the top spot away from Ike Durbin who drops down to third place. James Hewitt following close behind, just 10 points behind in second place. Lenny Jacobs surges up to fourth place in the points. Scott Wallen still having a fantastic run this season. He is in fifth, tied with Gaspar D'Souza in the 12 car. 
Uh, Sapphire Anderson having a fantastic showing so far this season. She is 7th in points with her teammate right behind her in 8th, Josh Marshall. Uh, Greg Woodard in 9th place, still having a great season so far. And Ian Elias, despite being involved in the accident, is still 10th in points. Tom Delgado is 11th. Preston Bell, 12th. Uh, Brian Gallagher, despite being involved in an accident, is 13th in points. Daniel Sharp, 14th in points. Keep an eye on him. Uh, his season has been... Uh, decent so far let's go with that he has not finished any lower than 22nd uh or i believe actually this this race was his worst finish of the season in 20th uh, i might be mistaken on that lewis jones in 15th alex phillips despite uh having a great qualifying effort did not turn that into a great result in the race is 16th in points hank jr wheat farmer 17th elena lazareva kurt pliskin and mark burt round out the top 20 in driver points. Now let's take a look at the team points. Paloma Autosport has taken the team championship over Griffith Motorsports. They have taken the lead in that, 275 points. Australian Motorsports is in third place, Manicor Engineering up to fourth. Accelerator Motorsports makes a huge leap from 11th to fifth place in the team standings with 204 points. Uh, going through, it is very, very close from sixth all the way down to 14th, uh, 182 points is 6th place team Ben Atkins, and 159 points, uh, both Double B Motorsports and Zactec Motorsports team are tied for 13th with that. Uh, the bottom three teams are Clayson Enterprises, Double B Motorsports, and Zactec Motorsports team. If those teams stay there, they will be relegated at the end of the season. Next race is at Carbondale, where, where we will bring you action from all three series, the trucks, the lights, and the cup series. See you next time.